Hello everybody and welcome, all thanks to LD Mobile right around the country. This is NBL Overtime, so much to get into. We're really four, only four rounds away from the NBL playoffs. Another player from the NBL goes to the NBA. Magne gets in the town, finals predictions and how will it all play out with a couple of teams out of form. I'm Cam Luke. This man is Corey Homicide Williams. And firstly, congratulations, man. I know you've been talking about it, but doing a great work on the 3x3 uh, tour and all the tournaments right around the world. But I see your ticket has come through for Tokyo. Man, thank you, man. Um, I'm super excited. Never thought I'd have an opportunity to call an Olympic game, let alone be at the Olympics. So Tokyo... The wolf will be there. One of many, and congratulations to you, Liam Santa Maria, because you had an extra day, really, to get studs and duds out, because for the first time in a long time, we had 24 hours breathing space in the NBL. <laughs> studs and duds, nbl.com.au, NBL app. Hello to you. Hello. Yeah, no, it was appreciated. I'll tell you, I walk into that feeling good. I feel like we're right at the point now where things ramp up towards the finals and I'm pumped for it. Well, I was feeling good until our pre-production meeting. Uh, I got in trouble from the two bosses that I didn't get to Will Magne earlier last week. So <laughs> let's do him off the top. He signs at the Wildcats and, of course, since last week, the Wildcats went to Melbourne, beat United and Will Magne signed the contract. Uh, who wants to take it first? Liam Santa Maria. Huge signing. Massive signing. And obviously the Wildcats, uh, right off the back of that win over Melbourne United. It wasn't the round just played, but it happened since we were last on air. And it was a big, big win. John Mooney, of course, 30 and 14. Bryce Cotton, they try to get it out of his hands a lot. Still had 16 points, but 10 assists. It's back-to-back -back games now for him with 10 dimes. And um, it does make things interesting at the top of the table for this championship race. These are the two teams we expect all things going as we anticipate to meet in the grand final series. And with Mill Magne in the house, it makes things very, very interesting. And hats off to the Wildcats for pulling it off, getting it done, striking early, getting him into quarantine. Saying, let's work out the particulars from, from there and then working through all the complexities of the deal and getting it done because um, he is, as Corey has been saying recently, the perfect fit for this team. If you could just carve out the exact kind of guy that they needed to come in, it's him, they've got him, and now they're going to wind him up. Put the three-peat in the bag, even if Will Magne wasn't there. Okay, what did we see without Will Magne by Perth Wildcats going against a team on an 11-game winning streak, playing at home? What did we see? An ass-whipping. You've seen an ass-whipping. How do you leave? How do you give at home a team on an 11-game win streak 69 points? They locked them down on defense, all right? this is it. Can we agree this is a high-potent offensive team, the highest in the league? True or false? Uh, the, uh, Who's hotter than them? Melbourne United. Highest potent offensive team. Who's as stacked as Melbourne United in this league? Nobody. Nobody. 69 points they held them to. Mm. John Mooney. 30 and 14. Bryce Cotton, again, who carves them up and owns them. 16 and 10 dimes. Mm. You might have tried to stop him offensively from getting his, but 10 assists is as good as anybody else, like, as far as him individually scoring, his mm. offensive output. So that was even more impressive to hold them to 69 points. Okay, what is Will Magne going to do when he joins this team? You're going to start. He's preparing not only for the Boomers, he's going to help them win a championship. He does not have to do that much. Okay, control the paint on defense, which you know he's going to do. He's an elite shot blocker, which we know he is. Is he 100% or not? Doesn't even matter. You know why? He can do everything that Miles Plumlee did last year and they won a championship. There's no way they're not winning. There's no way they are not winning. And he gives them even more of a confidence boost. So everybody, when a good player comes in, when an elite player comes into any team, you know what happens? The morale goes up even more. Everybody gets more confident. Oh, we definitely going to win. Him alongside John Mooney? Come on, man. It's yeah. over. No, it's, 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 it's not over. over. No, it's not over. It's, it's over. They're, they're better. It's over. Yeah. They're better, I agree. It's I'm over. not saying it's over. You don't have to. It's <laughs> okay. What's the record against Melbourne United? They're two and one. Okay, I'll take that. How many times Melbourne United went to Perth to play yet? This week, first time. How many times did they play? None. What do you think going to happen in REC Arena? Come on, man. We're going to see. You guys know the vibes. In we, two what, days. What always happens? What always happens? 
The Wildcats win. There you go. <laughs> Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. Man, yo, shout out to Trevor Gleason, man. When are we going to start talking about the greatest coach of all time in the NBA? I'll tell you when. I'll start that after they win in a couple of months. We'll get back to that. And being that this league is a hotbed for the NBA with talent, I wouldn't be surprised after he wins this championship, a team calls to join their roster. I wouldn't be surprised. You know why? I seen Will Weaver do it. There's no way that phone call would not be ringing right now for Gleason. They win a championship to be to join an uh, 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 NBA roster as assistant coach. I just want to reiterate, Liam, what you just said as well, because I did the hard yards. Yeah. Get the player to pretty much commit to your, to your club. And then they weren't in particulars on the other end of it. And that's what the best sporting organisations, clubs, franchises, whatever code around the world do. They go, this is who we want. We're going to get him. We're going to do and get him back to Australia. We'll get him into quarantine. And then once it starts to emerge that he's back here and it starts to heat up a little bit, then we'll start to worry about how exactly we're going to work a way to officially sign him. And yeah, no. that's, why they're, that's why they are the benchmark. No, there's no doubt about it. But this is the beautiful thing about sport. This is the beautiful thing is that nothing is ever for certain. As, I agree with a, that. As soon as we start locking things in on this desk, it goes the other way. I'm uh, telling you. We, we look at the start of the season, right? And we, and we look at what the New Zealand Breakers have put together and you go, that's a grand final team. Lock it in. It's going to happen because we think Lamar Patterson is going to be a certain guy. He turns up, he's not that guy. And it, it ruins their chances and they have, end up having the season that they have had. Now, I'm fascinated to see what Will Magne is like when he gets out there on the floor. Now, our expectation is going to be very close, if not the same guy that we saw last year and have that kind of impact. Well, Willie, he's barely played basketball over a long period of time here. He was playing in the G League. He did some good work but he was doing it on a bad ankle, bone spurs in there that have not been sorted out. The doctor decided not to operate. Now, is he gonna be the same athletic, bouncy, lob catching dude? And if so, well then he feels like he's gonna be the perfect fit. If not, well, what kind of impact does he have to their chemistry? I I'm fascinated to see, we don't know. I, I, I was with Melbourne United a just a little over Perth before this Will Magnes signing happened. Now I, I find it very, very difficult to split and I can't wait to watch him go at it. I have got an absolute certainty for you in a couple of minutes. But firstly, talking about what we expected was going to happen and what hasn't, we all came into this year thinking Cairns were going to have a great year. Machado, Oliver back. It hasn't worked that way. And in fact, Cam Oliver went back due to personal reasons and got a knock on the door and said, hey, we know and understand where your life and your situation is at, but can you give us 10 days in Houston? And he said, yes. And there Cam Oliver is, uh, we are, of course, doing this show before he takes the court. So we don't have any idea what he did. We expect with the injuries that uh, the Rockets currently have, that will get a fair bit of burn, if not today, over the next couple of days as we head towards the end of the NBA season. But this homicide is just a continual push. How great and how close the NBL is and playing to getting... Minutes in the NBA. If you don't want to be you, Homicide, Liam, take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Big ups. Much love to Cam Oliver and congratulations. Um, it's a great opportunity. And uh, we know we went home to, to sort out and deal with um, his family situation. And, and we send him ongoing and much love for that as well. But while he's over there, little chance to go and team up with the Rockets. Achieve his dream of playing in the NBA, tick that box, but also show a little bit of what he can do. And it's just yet another example of the pathway that exists from the NBL to the NBA. He's gonna go and re represent our league himself and his family on the big stage. And hopefully he gets enough tick in these last couple of games to give them a strong glimpse of what we know is legitimate NBA level talent and uh, whilst we would love to have him back in our league, we would also love to see him um, carve out an ongoing career in the NBA and wish him the best of luck. I don't want him back here. I want him right where he's going, right where he belongs. I think the more players get the opportunity and stick, it legitimizes this league. I remember years ago when uh, a lot of times because I'm passionate about what I'm talk about, what I talk about, and what I believe in, people often laugh at it. I remember guys would watch. Oh, they just paying you to hype it. What you saying now? 
those same guys in those other leagues are texting me, DMing me, emailing me. Yo, could you hook me up and get me in the league? If I don't believe in it, I don't push it or hype it or discuss it. They would laugh at me with the whole mellow thing. What's he about to be? Rookie of the year. The same thing about Giddy now. Wait, he can't be like that. He's about to go, what, triple-double number four at any day now, right? Well, maybe. Oh, top maybe five is a lock. Is. Top five is a lock. Top five ain't no lock, my man. He keep playing that way. Guess what? He's going to break that lock open. And you said it. That's the beauty of sport, mm. right? There's nothing to lock. There's nothing guaranteed. So the best thing that he has right now in Giddy is that he has the opportunity by himself in the world. College has stopped. Mm-hmm. Everybody's just watching him, so it's a beautiful thing. I know I have my opinion. I say shut it down, but the more he's playing, the more he's proven his value, and it continues to go up, so good luck to him. But back to Cam Oliver, man, proud of that kid Mm -hmm. because, young man, because he had the opportunity and he maximized the window, and that's why I always talk about the window of opportunity. It closes faster than it opens. So what? You in dead last. You in dead last this year. It was a disappointment. However, Keep giving him the ball and keep playing. Look at those numbers. You don't know what's around the corner. Mm. We didn't see this. He didn't see this. You know, but the opportunity, unfortunate that he had to leave early, this opportunity presented himself. He finished up the season strong. Good luck to him. Hopefully he plays tonight and puts on. Salute. Finals predictions. Let's get to them right now. We are about three weeks, four rounds away from it. Let's have a little look at it. And I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen. Brisbane? Yeah, my man, Guy. Brisbane? Oh, wow. Oh, God. My man, Guy, at the back, and I've got a stone cold lock for you. I had Melbourne, Perth, Daylight, 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 Phoenix, Brisbane. I've got a. Oh. Perth and Melbourne are playing in a grand final, Liam. I know you said nothing certainty. That's a certainty. Congratulations, Cam, that you said you thought Perth and Melbourne were going to be a lock for top two. No, grand, grand final. Grand, grand final. Groundbreaking stuff. Well, you said moments ago, nothing's a lock. I'm saying <laughs> it's a certainty these two teams play off in a grand final. So, hold on. We've all, we've all got a different... We've all got Perth, Melbourne. I think it's very interesting we've all got South East Melbourne. We need to talk about that team because they are um, having some problems mm-hmm. right now in a big, big way. But we've all got them in there. But we all have different... Uh, uh, someone else different. Brisbane for you, Cam. Illawarra for you, Corey. Sydney for me. Now, where do you want to start, Cam? Let's, got to, let's talk about all these teams. Let's start with Josh Kitty because we're about to see him and the Adelaide 36ers, who, to be fair, in my opinion, are playing the best of any team outside of the top two. Now, I didn't have them in because I'm not 100% sold that Josh Kitty is going to play the rest of the year. If he does, and here's the asterisk on it, they will probably... If someone said to me before I was asked that, Josh Giddy's going to play every game. I would have probably have put Adelaide at four. Okay, well, let me tell you, Cam. My latest word on, on yes. Josh Giddy is he, he's going to play as long as they're alive for the final. Okay. Well, which then. Is, which is huge. That, cha- How good that changes is that my thoughts the... on this. So you think they're going to make it now? Well, I think they are playing the best out of anyone, and they're close enough, and they play the teams around them to be able to force their way they're, in. They're playing amazing. They are. Terrific um, basketball. Three wins in a row. This was an, an enormous win. 16 points down. They come over the top in overtime and they have a whole bunch of contributors. whole bunch of guys doing well. They've won six of their last nine. But they're 13 and 16. They've got percentage issues. I'm telling you right now, that four spot's going to come down to percentage at the end of the day. And they've got seven games left. They, I think it's going to take 19 wins to get that fourth spot and to get into the finals, most likely. That, that means they, were, they, they would have to win six of their last seven. They do play against Melbourne again, and they do play against the Wildcats again. So they're going to have to be unbelievable down the stretch here to get there. Hey, I don't think 19 is needed to finish fourth because a lot of them play each other. Okay, so we haven't been able to see the separation between, you know, the Kings, well, the Kings had separation. It was called a 16-point lead in the third quarter, and I thought, here we go. I... I had the Kings in pre-season to make the four. I even had the Kings a couple of weeks ago. Maybe their injury is going to get them late. I love the way they go about it. Jared Weeks comes in, of course, and that's why I just see them missing yeah. out. But if Giddy plays, it's a different thing. Do you think you've been saying lock it down, but now you're like, hey, if he keeps doing this, anything's possible, right? Anything's possible. Um, he's that valuable. It just continues to show as an 18-year. we got to remember, this kid is 18 years old, and... Their season is on his shoulders, whether he decides to shut it down or not. So if that don't show you the kid's value, 
<laughs> I don't know what else will. Um, good luck to him. It's exciting um, getting to this part of the season because the cream rises to the top and he is rising. His value continues to rise every minute he plays on the court. So either way, good luck, man. I'm just glad that we have the best seat in the house to watch it all. Mm -hmm. All right, you had... The Hawks in your fall. I do. Besto, the announcement, he's out for the rest of the regular season. And Timmy Conrad, out of retirement, Woo. the legend that he is, going to add to that huge CV of games played in the NBL. And they've got a big one tonight. We, we talk about these teams playing each other. Adelaide and Illawarra are tipping off in a matter of moments. You still think they can make it, even though they haven't played all that well the last couple of weeks, Homicide? Yeah, I, I think that all of those home games that they have at the back end of this year, um, they'll figure out a way to sneak into that fourth spot. Gorgian doesn't come here to not make finals. And it's going to be a hell of a challenge. You know, they started off red hot, 4-0, and it has been a roller coaster ride. You know, this ain't a cupcake league. You got to come every night, and they're learning as they go. They're getting on-the-job experience. Gorgian is actually getting more experience seeing that, you know, he's just not in here dominating the league like we're used to seeing him do, and he's accustomed to doing it. And it's going to come down a stretch, but I believe with all of those home games and those faithful home court uh Fans, they'll find a way to get into the finals. You had who fourth? Oh, I had, had Sydney. Sydney and Southeast yep. Melbourne, and I think they're gonna just miss for me Illawarra. And I think the fact that Bearstow's gonna gonna be out the rest of the way is probably the thing in the end that's gonna they're gonna we're gonna look back and say that was the difference for that team. I mean, he he is really really important for them. Conrad's, a, you know, it's great to bring him in as a veteran presence off the bench, but that. You know, Max Darling, AK Gak, they obviously don't feel like they've got the guys to come in and play those minutes. And um, it, it puts a heavy load on, you know, a, pr a pretty young guy in Sam Froling to kind of... And I, he's been sensational, but I think they're probably just going just gonna to miss down the stretch. But it's going to be fun watching. I mean, this game tonight... Huge. Enormous. Adelaide and Illawarra. I think both of those teams are going to miss out. But whichever one gets... This win tonight, I feel like, continues to keep the dream alive. If Adelaide win, they go straight into fifth spot, believe it or not. Um, but it all comes down as well. What can Gorge get the, this Illawarra team to play the kind of defence they played on New Zealand last game down in Tassie, game after game after game the rest of the way? They don't have the talent offensively to, to beat teams without getting that done. You know, Tyler Harvey and Justinian Jessup, it's too big a load on two guys. So if they can do that, they're going to get some wins and be right in it down the stretch. Yeah. But I think they're coming from a little bit far behind. That's a big if, considering they haven't been able to do it consistently yeah, since yeah. the start of the year. So, yeah. And this is the thing. We, we've been exposed to a lot of different things. And this is why I, in a situation, I've got Brisbane in because I just feel Andre Lamanis, of course, the announcement in the last couple of days that he's, he's taken a lucrative job offer overseas. I just think there's a bit of a pressure off them. And I think they can go out and play their best basketball that way. You know how much I love Nathan Sobey, mm -hmm. new import in. Matty Hodgson's had a great year. And if you look at a situation with... If Lamar Patterson... Again, a big if because for the exact same reason that Illawarra's defence, we can't just click our fingers and expect it's going to happen. Lamar's had his injury concerns over the course of the year. But if they get a run at it for three weeks, they are a dangerous team. Can they do any damage towards per Melbourne and Perth? No. But they've got opportunities against all those teams that are battling them out for third, fourth, fifth and sixth that I think with a couple of home games as well, I think just tips the ledger towards them because they're the guys I think can get going. Yeah, OK. Well, uh, So they're, um, they've got a few extra games up their mm -hmm. sleeve, but they're coming from a bit behind. They're tw two games below 500 right now, um, but they look good. Uh, not... I mean, everyone looks good after they play Cairns, that, right? South East well. Melbourne looked good it's after true. they played Cairns, and we started to think, oh, well, maybe they've turned the corner, but they haven't. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do. They've got, oh my God, they've got a big game coming up against Will Magne and the Wildcats in Brisbane. Can't wait to see that, but it'll be interesting. I, I worry... And I, I think I flagged this two or three months ago. Oh, I worry that it's just going to be the same story for the Bullets where they leave their run too late and they just miss out. 12 and 14 right now. Got some tough games against, you know, the Wildcats and the like coming up. And they're starting from a point where they've already got percentage issues, which I think could be an issue down the street. Big difference to last year, though. If you look at last year's regular season, Melbourne United and Cairns probably played their best, or did play their best, at the end of the regular season. So they had to catch teams that were playing well. From three down, from the yeah, Phoenix no, down, right. no one's playing well. This is where the big... And it's the Adelaide. intriguing part of NBL 21. But Adelaide are... are in that ruck as well, so they're not having to catch Adelaide per se, even yeah. though the records are, are relatively similar. Now... 
Let's talk about South East Melbourne Phoenix. We've all got them in. I'll start with you, Liam. Why are you still confident they can make a playoff spot? <laughs> Man, I'm hanging in there with them. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they have... Um... Where's that castaway? Where's Wilson that you had last year <laughs> no, on Bullets Island. Island? We need Phoenix Island the Phoenix for you. Island, geez, they've been really disappointing over, over recent times, haven't they? They just... They've just forgotten how to defend. I, I really feel like their identity, and, and we said this from the start of the season, we, we, the only time we've seen it recently is up in Cairns. From the opening tip, they got up the floor, they're press, pressing, pressuring, causing turnovers. It, it um, engages them all defensively. And, uh, you know, they, they took control of that game right from the open tip. I, don't, I still don't know why we're not seeing that. Game after game against every team. Estep, that's your identity. I thought that was going to be their identity coming into the season. And it just hasn't been where they've, what they've been doing in recent times. I, I think Mitch Creek's going to snap out of this. He's the key for me, right? He was an MVP Great. level performer earlier in the season. He's their best player without a shadow of a doubt. And um, I, I think everything that's been going on with him has caught up with him a little bit over the last couple of games and he's been on the back foot. I wrote during the week, I never thought I would be using the word passive when talking about the way Mitch Creek plays the game. He, we, used, we are used to watching Mitch Creek play and going, without a shadow of a doubt, there is nobody on the floor playing harder and with more intensity than that man. And you can't say that about him right now. He's the key. I agree. Here's the key. I believe in him on the floor, and I think he's going to snap out of it, and they're going to do enough to get over the line. I agree. Here's what I think. Against Cairns, he played 33 minutes, 4 of 8. Against Brisbane, 34 minutes, 3 of 6. Against Melbourne United, 29 minutes, 4 of 6. Combined, 7 for 7, 8, 12, 8, 20. What do I say about marquee players when they need to play? How many shots they need to take a game? Mm -hmm. 20! He's taking 20 in three games, which means what? Get that man the ball, man. Give him the ball. If he's a key and a marquee player, give the man the ball. Play off of him. Y'all ain't doing nothing else anyway. Right now to run you in, how is it looking? Bad. Get that man the ball and play through him, man. Everybody else, play your position. It starts and ends with Mitch Creek, in my opinion. There's no way. How much money are you paying him? He's the, mo he's the man. Everybody else fall in line. 20 attempts a game he needs to play, especially when y'all playing trash. It's equal opportunity now. What's going on? It's Nothing. Nothing is happening. Get that man the ball, B. I, I, I agree with you. He needs to get a whole bunch of shots. He needs to be heavily involved. But I'm going to put... And earlier in the season, I was saying exactly the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit more on him. Balance. Because what I think on, on the weekend against um, Melbourne United, they, they did run some stuff and put him in some scoring positions. He wasn't his usual aggressive self. Simon Mitchell spoke about it in the post-game presser. But what we've always seen with Mitch Creek is he, imp he um, puts himself, asserts himself on the game. I want to see him ripping off the defensive glass, not outletting it to Kiefer Sykes or anyone, pushing it. Going. I want to see kick aheads to Mitch Creek and him putting heat on the rim like we're used to seeing over the years. Hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. Who's your top four prediction in a year that is so intriguingly poised as we head to the last final stretch of NBL 21? Of course, every each and every week at NBL on socials and on this show, all thanks to LD Mobile, we count down the top 10 plays of the week. Round 17 is done. Let's have some fun. It's your Audi Mobile NBL Top 10. Number 10 starts with some Vinky Joyce hustle and ends on the fly with some Mojave King muscle. Mirko Jurek sets the table just like a waiter, allowing King to hop on and ride his unending elevator. He gets in at number 10. At nine, Cans tried to double Nathan Sobey won Kenobi, but you'd have better luck chasing down a ghost because once Sobey got past him, the tie fans were toast. Nathan lobs in Matt Hodgson, and we've got back-to-back -back alley oops to get the countdown rolling at ten and nine. On to number eight, where Humphreys thinks these threes are a breeze, but this was huge as it helped to force OT in. Overtime, Adelaide got the win and Isaac helped the cause when this one fell in at number eight. It's full service from the Kings at seven. Jordan Hunter puts Isaac shot asunder. Then on the other end, it's Casper Ware on the share in the air so Jarrell can ring the bell. Sydney, do it 
it all as Martin hammers the ball that gets in at number seven. At number six, there's a lesson here. You've got to pay attention if you want to get the rejection. Tom Vodanovic sneaks into the lane, but Keanu Pinder is on him like scales on a snake as he helps off his man and denies this take. Beautiful defense from Keanu gets him through to number six. We're up to number five where the MVP's just dealing against New Zealand. Bryce Cotton drops a pass up to the roof and John Mooney's there to deliver the truth. Cotton way out beyond the three point line, but that's a divine dime that's right on time. Cotton and Mooney get in at number five. At number four on the drive, Jarrell Martin opts for a revolution, but Isaac Humphreys has the solution. Humphreys with better footwork than a centipede as he adjusts, recovers, and rises to impede. The 36ers with a little defense get back in at number four. On to number three where Kyle Adnam looks like the magic man with this no-look gem. Right to Yanni breaking free of the D on a rim spree. The Phoenix showing off some magic tricks as they get in at number three. At number two from smack dab on the Hungry Jacks half court logo, Mirko Jirik gets this impossible shot to go. Mirko shot it from so far away, the ball looked like re-entry debris, but he ends up with a three. Mirko's a hero on this one at number two. But at number one, oh, you know what's coming. Perth's John Mooney must be an astronaut with the hops he's got. Reaching back with the extension from another dimension. John looks like King Kong as he climbs the tower to show off his power and land at number one on the NBL. Cut it. Well, thanks to LD Mobile. That is the top 10. If you missed it or you just want to see it again, and that is fair enough, at NBL on all the socials. All NBL first team, John Mooney. That's all lock. Lock, yep. Sweet. Beautifully done. All right, last week you did mention, Liam, we might start to see some extensions. Mm -hmm. Tyrell Harrison today, two years for the Brisbane Bullets. And we've got to give a shout-out, remarkably, Dave Anderson. Not remarkably that Dave Anderson is back in the lead. Remarkably, it's taken almost the entire show to mention he is back. Straight out of the Frankston Blues, of course, oh, in the NBL 1, playing well. But back <laughs> at Melbourne United. <laughs> Great to see the uh, the OG, I think you called him on Instagram, back in the league. Yeah, man. The mayor of Frankston, shout out to him. He's going to bring a whole lot of championship experience back yet again to that club. So, good luck to him. It, what was the first thing Dean Vickerman said to DA when he walked into uh, John Kane Arena Saturday night? Do you know? Welcome back, big fella. Had he seen him previously? I think that was not. Nah, that was the first time that <laughs> they that, that locked horns. But, uh, look, you know what? I said it but in off-season, Cam. Yep. He's going to... When he, they have to go to him because of foul trouble in important moments of a grand final series game, he's going to have no fear. He's going to catch in the block, fade away. He's going to have a couple of big buckets, lock it in. Now, you said in the show, no certainties, right, in the NBL, and understandably. Yeah, except for that one. But we're locking it in, right, the grand final series. We made our finals predictions. Let's go one step further. We're, yeah, no we're, one's beating either of those two teams agreed. in the semifinal. Yeah. You know who's winning it. You, you guys talking semi. You know what I'm about. The three-peat. You don't care who they play? Doesn't matter. It'll go five. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> What's Giddy going to give us tonight? Matter of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Just continue to show people you are a top five pick. That's the whole thing. Keep balling out. Keep rebounding. <laughs> lock in that top five. <laughs> Ever since you slid into his DMs or vice versa about chasing it. All right. Hey, all thanks to JD Sports, undisputed uh, king of trainers. Have a look at our man Ooh. Sam McDaniels having a nice year. A lot more minutes this year for Melbourne United with some injuries. He's been brilliant. But have a look at this. Dropping at JD this week, the Air Jordan 7 Flint. Now, nah, those are fire. That's <laughs> Callaway makes its return first time since 2006. Available in men's sizes this Saturday at JD Stores and online. Grab your pair, get involved, jd-sports.com.au. I saved the absolute best for last, and you can't get better than them. They are shooting at a better yep. clip than oh anybody goodness. else in the NBL, JD. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Look at this. This is the JD shot. Beautiful. What that? <laughs> Peace.